From classrooms to the field, truth and laughter both revealed. Tune in for that special feel. Napa schools always real. Welcome to Napa, where dreams can grow. <laughs> Matt and Tyler on the show. Welcome to Napa, where dreams can grow. Matt and Tyler. Somebody used an AI engine. What are you talking about? <laughs> we hired, they might be, not giants? they might be giants. No. Wrong sound. <laughs> Bowling for soup? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, welcome in everybody to episode 15 of the Nampa School District podcast. My name is Tyler Keefe. I'm the digital communications specialist for the Nampa School District. Along, me, along with me, as always, is Matthew J. There you Sizemore. go. Well remembered, sir. Yes, as always, pleasure to be here. Uh, Matt Sizemore is my name. The I think I finally memorized a community and media relations specialist here at the Nampa School District. And what a show we have. I am beyond excited. And also, we should start out by mentioning that we are in a different location yes, for the first time. We're first hitting, one. Hitting the road across the street. Yes, over here at Nampa High in the new eSports Spectator Arena. Is that what we're calling right. it? Spectator Arena. And we have a couple of guests with us to my left. And your left, if you're watching it online, is Cody Kreps, our Director of Information Services for the Nampa School District. That's right. everybody. Good to have you, Cody. Thank you. And to my right, he is above the line <laughs> at all times. He's won every award that ever could be made. We have the head esports coach for Boise State University, Dr. Doc Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> Doc. I was like, did that cancel that out? Yeah, I don't man, think so. I think so. Double negative. Yeah, hey. Hey. What's up? Thanks for being here. Oh, my gosh. This is so cool. This space is so cool. Uh, we didn't have this when I was growing up. Um, it, it, when I was growing up, it maybe it, it would have been a Pac-Man machine in the lunchroom, but yes. the, this is something way cooler. Awesome. Well, we are so happy to have you here today, and especially here in our uh, eSports so Spectator cool. Arena, because... Uh, what what a lot of people might not know, or uh, which, which you should know. First off, Doc here commands. Uh, I'd say, would you say? And I, I don't know, even know if I want to ask you. I know you're humble, but probably <laughs> the most prolific esports uh, program in uh, or collegiate program in the country right now. I know you're at least top three, if not number one. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's who's measuring and when they're measuring, right? Because Yale was one of the first uh, football powers in 1869, right? Sure. Uh, but Alabama says that they're they're terrible. It's it's <laughs> what do you count as wins? Um, we what what is indisputable is almost 1,500 wins, which is the most in college uh, esports Division Insane. One. Um, that's uh, 12, well, soon to be 13 Mountain West uh, titles, uh, four national titles, 23 other conference titles. Um, and so uh, by those measures, it's going all right. It's, and this it's is, going all right. And this is only a span of, of seven, eight years? This seven is year years? eight for us, yeah. So uh, it, when, I, when I started, I thought it might, be, it might be cool if I could reach the win total as a head coach of Greg Patton who uh, for the Broncos was their tennis coach for decades and amassed uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 900 wins. Um, We're playing with monopoly money in esports because we can have a match a day on average, right? We'll, we'll have 200 a year. So uh, the math, I mean, you know, it's, it's a, it's a made up number in that sense, right? It just, (laughs) they don't, they don't compare, but uh, just short of 1500 wins now, um, about 2,000 total matches in, in our eight years. And, of course, we can't forget, because we have to mention, and I know you're not going to, but uh, the this man right here. Uh, now, tell me if I'm forgetting something. National Esports Coach of the Year in 2020, Esports Director of the Year in 2020, Collegiate Ambassador of the Year 2021, and Best Collegiate Director of the Year in 2022. What am I forgetting? That uh, that sounds like a list. <laughs> yeah. It's a list. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny, it, you know, because they, they they move the the titles of these around in different organizations. I mean, like boxing, it's like belts. You know, there are all these different organizations that want to give their thing, and I've been very blessed and privileged to have been named a few of those times. I don't ever want to win another one. Truly, truly, I I think it would be amazing to be nominated with people I really respect, but it doesn't do me any benefit to, uh, you know, 
to to do those things. I, I still have to take out the recycling. Um, <laughs> no advantages that come from it, but but lots of colleagues who probably uh, well who definitely deserve those kinds of titles. Nice. So to kind of kind of start off, I know we've been just throwing out esports. M- people out there might not even oh, know what esports is. They're so, so confused. Yeah. In, in a nutshell, what is esports? And then I'm going to ask a follow up to you, yeah. Cody, which led to this. Uh, I'll just give it to you simply. It's competitive video games, um, like schools and colleges attract the best uh, rowers, the best uh, you know basketball or volleyball players they can find. Uh, colleges and universities, over 800 now, scholarship, uh, competitive gamers to play against uh, and hopefully beat other schools in their conference. No, that's good. So, so Cody, we're, we're in the Nampa High NSD. We're in Nampa High, but really NSD Esports uh, Spectator Arena, as we kind of just coined it today. Um, but what led to this, and it's really been since last February, when this all just started to be, and now here we are a few short months later, and it's like we're literally in the space now. So kind of walk us through the story. I don't think Matt really knows the story, so it's going to be first for him as well. Yes. So, yeah. So what – I mean, we had conversations about eSports here um, before uh, that event that you're talking about, um, but it was more just conversations on what we can do and what that might look like. And honestly, I didn't know um, all of of what it would take to do what we did. So luckily I am on um, the Idaho Educational Technology Association board and we hold a a tech conference every year, ed tech conference, uh, downtown Boise at the Boise Center. And last year our theme was eSports. Can't remember what the the theme name was, uh, take it to the next level or something like that. Yeah, something like level up. Level up. Thank yeah. You. Oh, anyway, yeah. so they, I think just because they were looking, the board was looking for me to do something instead of just sitting around being a, you know, Mr. Funny guy. So <laughs> they put me, I, I pitched the idea of we should have a pop up uh, esports event. So um, I got a hold of some partners that were happy to, to uh, bring equipment in, and uh, HP brought in some machines. Marshalls did a lot of work for video and stuff. And then I partnered with Boise State. Um, to do the actual live stream and the shout casting. And that event was amazing. Uh, we had local teams from the state come in. Um, they competed. One of them was Nampa High, and they well, absolutely. And with Nampa High, though, something, they, I mean, they dominated. I know you're going to say that, but something special happened with Nampa High specifically with those kids. Yeah. yeah. No, and yep. So. Uh, they did so they completely dominated the two-day tournament Um, we had uh, the some of the vendors that were in the vendor hall saw our kids play Uh, they were absolutely amazed by what they were doing uh, so they decided to sponsor some of them so uh, all three kids got decked out with uh, the Lenovo uh, gaming PCs of their choice they all got custom esports jerseys Uh, they got some free coaching um, there's some other things that STS uh, Education and uh, Lenova hooked them up with. Um, other cool thing was is that uh, some of the kids that were there are awesome vendors. I sent them home with the gaming chairs they sat in, nice, yeah. um, and, which was fantastic because so cool. I had one kid tell me, you know, we're using old broken office chairs, and yeah. so this team took home those those gaming chairs. So that's pretty well, awesome. and and pretty he, fantastic. he's he's not going to give you this, but let me let me tell you. So I've been in a few of these spaces. Um, your vision for what this needed to be was awesome because I mean, you, 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 yeah, you brought in these vendors and things like this, but you had a vision that uh, not only were they going to be on a stage, it was going to be an elevated stage. It was going to be like DJ lit kind of stage, massive led screen so that people could watch it. Y- it was your idea to make sure that there were shout casters. Or sometimes people will just put desks against the wall to make more floor space and invite people to walk up behind the players. That's not what you did. You elevated these kids, and they are talented kids, right, to be able to compete and to have people cheer for them in a way that many of them have never experienced before. It was it was as prime an event as as you could have, and – and it showed. I mean, the, I still show. We have pictures of that event in our facility because it was so cool. That's amazing, and I do appreciate all that. Oh, um, it's, you coming was amazing. Um, another another really amazing thing was our superintendent 
who didn't know anything about esports. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, and and he's down here watching people standing on their feet and oh, and, he's screaming and screaming yeah. and yeah. yelling for Nampa High yeah. to oh, to nice. to win. Uh, I did uh, win a lunch bet in that, so that was pretty good Yay. too. I enjoyed that with another tech director at a different district, but. Uh, um, yeah, I appreciate that. It it was absolutely a, a fun time. And when when uh, when Greg and uh, or Dr. Russell saw that, and Mr. So Stoffer saw that, basically, Mr. Stoffer told me, "Let's build it. If you build yeah. it, they will come." Yeah. And what and happened with that? We we were literally we left your arena, and we were on the corner of was it Front and Bannock, I think, whatever it is. Yeah. And I remember that conversation of both both Courtney and Dr. Russell saying. We get it now. Yep. Have fun. You know, you, you bring up a really good point, and it was your, it was your vision that got them there because I think we all um, have this moment where we see it. Uh, we we hear about it. We know what esports is, but until somebody sees the the kids competing and immediately takes a side, they don't have to understand the game. It's just like football. Grandma Grandma doesn't understand football, but she knows that she's a Bulldog fan for life, right? Right. She's going to go there and cheer. She doesn't understand what's happening. Uh, who got the ball? I mean, you kind of tell when your team is doing well, but maybe that's it. It is seeing it in that environment that you're like, oh, that's what this is. So you creating that, uh, just that vision for people to to grab onto it is what allows them to progress in their understanding of where it fits. I agree. And and a lot of our ideas they come from Boise State and we, and we went, stole them from somebody and, else. I'm sure. And and <laughs> <laughs> Boise State was very happy to to host the event, but the reason why I did it I, even though they're right by each other, we were doing tours at your um was I I wanted the the school districts to see that this is something you can build. Right. And we built it in a day. So, and, and maybe you can't afford all the fancy stuff that was there. We couldn't afford it. Um, but we had, again, partners that brought it in. It was, we didn't get to take it home or anything like that, but, um, there's things you can do and you can build something in your district that has that, that wow factor, uh, that can draw the kids in that can want the, the, that's why with the spectating arena or spe yeah. yeah, I mean, that's very important. And you brought that up to us and I, it, you're absolutely right because seating is important. Um, you know, having a place to really get into that, that moment, you're watching kids, as I used to say, before I got into this play soccer with cars, <laughs> right? When you're watching it on your phone or you're watching it on, on just a video, it's okay. This is kind of but what I watched that day with the, with our Nampa High kids was I watched plays, and yeah. I watched people yes. holding back. I watched people getting in position for passing. Strategy. There yeah. was there was coaching there, yeah. the, um, and that just bored me and amazed me. And I think that also is what got to to Dr. Russell was this is this is fantastic, yeah. and you 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 see the kids working on it. It it's the same thing that you see in in yeah. other sporting events and. It, it was amazing to me that changed my whole outlook. And um, even though I was already interested in it because my son's a gamer, um, he got me back into it. I'm usually one of the first ones to go down. Um, but um, but it, it was just very, very exciting. Uh, it, and it was it it opened people's eyes to I like that you did that over there. Right. I mean, we always invite people to come in and use our space. But um, being able to stand it up there in a day. Uh, gave people uh, exactly that believability that um, oh well, that, oh that's just this stuff right? right yeah just being able to see the Legos you know essentially that that build that thing you're like oh I could do this I yeah. could do this yeah. and hopefully and we it's one of the things we encourage when people come into the Boise State Arena which is maybe the most DIY of all time right is that oh that's just that. Oh, we could do that, right? Right. It, yep. the, it's the it's the I can do that kind of vibe that standing up a space of your own, not having it built out by, you know, a production company. It makes the biggest difference. I agree. And Doc, uh, obviously, as you can see, we are in the infancy here when it comes to esports uh, spectator arena or a and, and a, whatever okay. an arena. Sure, <laughs> thanks language. Um, but uh, he words really good. He does yeah, work. You know, he's yeah. a good worker. Next, Next time, time. <laughs> we've been impressed sometimes. <laughs> Jeez, I'm just so in awe. Um, so at <laughs> there was a point though when when you were the one saying, 
hey, we can do this mm -hmm. about eight years ago. Yeah. What was it? And I know you weren't the only one. There were a lot of other. Uh, yeah, Brett people. Shelton. Namely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember talking to Brett. Uh, uh, man, I, I came here about seven years ago. So I think you guys were about a year in was the first time I talked to Brett about the program when it was up and coming. Mm -hmm. You were you've been the head coach the entire time since its inception. But you are also one of the the people to help start and create the esports program at BSU. What was it in what was it to you that made you feel? I know you were with Boise State beforehand as well as a professor and and still yeah. are. But what was it that that made you say we need an esports program? Why is this so important? The the origin story. Uh, let me give you the origin story in a haiku. Five seven five. Professor. Research. Esports is going to be huge. Oh, crap. I'm in charge. <laughs> uh, we brought it forward. I was doing research on something else and uh, brought it forward. And like, um, there's about 35 schools that are doing this, and there's a lot of energy behind it. There's sponsorships, there's grants, there's this thing. We, there aren't a lot of Division I schools in this yet, right? It was Utah, it was Miami, Ohio at that point. We'd heard rumblings at Georgia State. We're like, wait. We could get in pretty big. Uh, I took the idea forward to Brett. Brett is my department head. They're like, yeah, let's take this forward to the dean, the dean uh, to the provost, then other college deans like uh, Gordon Jones, who's now the uh, president at uh, CWI, um, who said, yeah, let's, let's do this. And before I was aware of what was happening, um, I was in charge of it. Um, uh, <laughs> But if you know a little of my history, um, I came into the university 18 years ago uh, directly from uh, teaching high school band. Uh, wow. I knew Sam, who was here for decades, right? I mean, he's a colleague. Um, what I do now is what I did then. I get really talented individuals, soloists, if you will, to perform together when it matters. Soloists, and good. and that's essentially the same thing, just no oboes, which is, I think everybody <laughs> is happy is a yeah. good deal. <laughs> the idea, uh, but so so we, we started it as a, hey, this could be big. We, I, I knew that someday there'd be that singularity moment where there'd be more college esports programs than college football programs. And when we started, it was about 880. And 880 is the number of football programs that continues to drop, right? Huh. Two-year schools are, are moving away from it. Um, it. You know, CTE and some of those other issues related to football have caused it to diminish in places that just can't afford it. Plus, a lot of colleges are just being incorporated into other things. Two, two universities become one. Uh, this is real, real common back east um, where they used to have a university um, – as, uh, maybe as frequently as ABC stores would be in Honolulu, right? You could um, w jump from roof to roof of ABC stores. That's, the universities back east were kind of like that. That said, um, I think we passed that two years ago, that singularity moment. Um, there are over 1,200 um, four-year to two-year college esports programs wow. um, that are sure. officially recognized and supported in some way by their university. Uh, over 800 have scholarships today. That's, first off, that's amazing. Uh, second off, in in those eight years, though, after you guys make this decision, oh, no, I'm in charge. No, I have to do this. Uh, oh, oh, crap. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Sorry. <in> yeah. <laughs> you have become, as I mentioned at the beginning of the program, the Boise State Esports Program has become uh, one of the premier programs in the entire country. And, and some of the things, just to look over it, Institution of the Year, uh, Collegiate Player of the Year, Emiliano Durtho. Yeah, the high, the esports equivalent of the Heisman. Yes. And when you see him, you, well, you're like, okay, I know, I get Heisman. Yeah. He's jacked. Yeah, he's a big <laughs> dude. Um, fun story, I had the pleasure of playing him at Rocket League, as you know. <laughs> pleasure, though? <laughs> <laughs> For others. Okay, right. Uh, right. Yeah, he, Amusement. I, yeah, that's what it is. And uh, he beat me. I think the final score was 23 to 1, and my 1 was on accident. I accidentally hit it in, and I don't think – he was going off their strategy of me trying mm -hmm. to – I accidentally hit it, and he was like, oh, that was an accident. So I think he was a little upset that I even got one on him. But you know what? He's the, the Heisman. He of the still East. stews about it. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, outstanding production team of the year, which we're definitely going to get into because there's yeah. so many aspects of esports behind the scenes, things going on that people can branch off, that students can branch off to mm -hmm. with that. But what would you say? Obviously, there's no one thing that that goes into it says now we're now we're a good program. 
What do you think it is about you, your team, your program over the years, uh, just for our own sake as we're in the infancy, that has made you guys such a prominent program here in the country? Honestly, we've we've found talented people and given them um, access to come in and help. And I th- so I th- as I think about that for the Napa School District specifically, um, there are people who are who are going to hear this who are going to think of, oh, well, my brother in law does this thing, um, or, or I, you know, these kids, oh, I, I have this idea, or you know, I'm sitting around with this uh, this piece of electronic equipment, this old camera that I, I should just donate. Truly, it is that we've. We've not had our own idea about how it should be, and we've just kind of looked around to see how we could uh, bring other people in. We were lucky enough um, to incept uh, Dr. Bob Custer at the time and get him to say the words, we wanted to be the Alabama of esports, right? Yep. Um, it, Nampa could be the you know, the modern day of esports or the <laughs> you know, St. John Bosco of esports. You know, these, these regional magnetic powers that are just – epically good at well so the two of those schools are epically good at apparently at everything yeah. right <laughs> um, but uh, but it it was it was that idea that um he he very quickly set what the expectation was and then applied it to us uh, the other thing i think that we've done to to maybe be be good first on our campus cuz i mean the truth is you you have to win for your students first doesn't matter what other people really think. Uh, it's great that they have caught some part of the vision that we have internally, but it's for our kids, yeah. and it's primarily for our campus. So um, Bob Kustra uttering, and and Dr. Trump has done it a number of times and expanded on it, but this idea of the Alabama of esports was to link what we were doing with athletic iconography and culture and and to help people understand that the thing that we're doing is just like football— um, but it's a, in a different place. It's on a different scale, um, and and the competition looks a little different. But it is the core of what we do. We we have Wyoming this week in in esports because we play all of our football opponents same week That's as right. the football team. Again, one of those just athletic alignments. Well, we're gonna we're gonna beat them, and we're a hundred percent again um, uh, when we play the uh, the one exception was a bowl game, but we play the opponent. And beat them in the same week. The football team always wins. Ooh, Pretty cool. Wow. So, but but it, but it was that it started with the Alabama of esports. But that alignment with we're going to try to do some things. Um, we don't know what games we're going to play each week against like uh, Wyoming or last week it was SGSU. Um, but we know that that rivalry is important. Who's the, who's the next? Uh, or no, are we done? Are we done with preps as we record this? Who's is there a football game this week? Yeah. Uh, no, it's, no, 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 high school. It's, it's high in school. the oh, state championship, oh, gotcha. but, okay. yeah. but, but Nampa's done. Yeah. Oh, our, yeah. Nampa's done. Oh, Nampa's sorry. I, I should have checked that before. Right. No, you're yeah. done. Your apologies to the audience. No, but I mean, <laughs> young teams making those, making those rivalries and those celebrations significant, uh, and tying them to athletics is something a lot of colleges didn't do early, but now a lot of colleges do. It was survival for us. This is a blue turf culture, yeah. uh, unless you're from the, uh, the band up North, um, but it really is, uh, you know, blue turf culture down here. So all of our, uh, approach and, and philosophy just mirrors what they do. And we're very cognizant of what they do. Cause it's a, it's a language that works. It's a culture that works and we can attract the kind of people we want to come and be Broncos. Nice. Well, and s- something with it, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, the, the equivalent to athletics basically, right. but for some of the kids that are in the esports team they're not the same kid that's going to be on the basketball court that's going to be mm-hmm. out playing on the field but they have that niche and now they can be a part of something that they a never team. had a chance to be yeah. a part of before other than yeah you know not not to poke fun of it playing a video game in their basement yeah right. well and, l- and let me let me uh, bring something in that'll make all the um the students cringe, but the parents smile is that, um, athletics and activities are always a vehicle through which we can build a stronger culture of success. So uh, our players as, as your players have academic requirements, they don't travel, they don't start if they are failing stuff. 
So we, because they love this thing that we're supporting them in, we have greater access to motivate them to do the things that they need to do to be more successful in school. And my first question when somebody says, hey, you know, what do I need to do to come play for Boise State? My first question is, what's your GPA? 3.8 or higher. Um, If you're 3.8 or higher, you qualify for a ton of other scholarships at the university. And whether you come in as a, as a broadcaster or someone in the production team or as a player, uh, you're going to get scholarshiped if your grades are good. So um, when people are like, oh, I'm really good at this game. What do I need to grind? You need to grind math, <laughs> right? You right. need to grind math. You need to grind history, economics. You need to just be good at being a student because we can, we can make smart people into great gamers. We can't make great gamers into smart people. Right. It just doesn't work that way. And so so kind of shifting a little bit of focus on, on from that to something else. I have a buddy up in Waterloo, Canada. Oh, yeah. And they're they're trying to start their esports program, but they're getting some a little bit of apprehension from their leadership at their school sure. and their school board. So what would you say to to him as to, you know, try to get get their admin to understand and see how valuable this really can be and to get them to embrace it. <laughs> Depending on the person, I think the most valuable thing <laughs> is to identify other universities uh, that they compete with that are doing it and offer the opportunity to kick their butts. <laughs> 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 because, uh, I mean, so A.J. Demick is the director at University of Utah, and he's a friend. Um, became friends through this process. Uh, we've used each other many times to inspire a little creative jealousy. He'll be going into a meeting and it's like, hey, Doc, send me pictures of your, of your stage. Send me pictures, you know, like this kind of stuff. Hey, do you have that, uh, do you have that mock-up of the other space you were talking about? We, we're sending stuff back and forth all the time because University of Utah does not want to be outshined by this I mean, we have blue turf. How dare, right? <laughs> uh, and that is okay. We, w- I discovered long ago that as, as colleagues, especially collegiate colleagues, we, we compete, but we are not in competition with one another. I mean, everybody is fighting for uh, recognition, appreciation, and resources on their own campuses, just as you are here, right? This room is a testament that, like, these resources are important, Right. Uh, we want to we want to create this space for these kids. It'll be gravitational, and it is. It's amazing. Um, you know, I, as adults, we always say, oh, "I wish we had this when I was in school." No, I mean, I'm just grateful <laughs> we true. have it now. But I mean, that kind of so truly, what I would say to him is, the people y- you can't convince people um, significantly, but what you can do is show them something and let them convince themselves, like the space that you create. Yes. Right. Is like, is you don't you don't need to make a uh, you know hey can you share your deck with me no just walk in the room yeah and you if you don't get it, it you can't get yeah. it uh, yeah. but you will get it yep yeah. well and I think part of that is yeah out in literally in the audience right now they just walked out to a meeting but we have our district af- activities director yep. he was walking in and he just kind of had this look of awe and then he goes yeah. tell me about it and then our he literally said I get it all yeah. right let's go. And, you know, that it, it's one of those things I remember, you know, Courtney telling you, if you build it, they'll come. Totally. And so it kind of fits with that. But then on the flip side of it, if we don't have a teacher or a coach who's a gamer, and, you know, I, I know a lot of yeah. your history and the videos that I've seen where you're not a gamer, but you're this stupid, fantastic coach, how can you get that that? That Stupid kinda, in a good way. Yeah, in a good yeah, way. I'll, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, Stupid I'll, awesome. I won't yeah. I won't accept fantastic. It's stupid. <laughs> I think we could find some I think we could find did some you, resources did, to Did su- you hear how many it. wins he has? And, yeah, and, exactly. And okay. But but you're not you you're not a proclaimed gamer. It, it, so how do you get that across? State, Let's just put it that <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, you know. uh, right. that's, that's fine. That's fine. We beat them pretty good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think I think over ten times now. Yeah. Although although UW <laughs> UW did beat us in pretty uh, bad uh, in Sacramento this week. So oh, nice. Uh, oh. But it'll it'll take. I'm it. thinking football, not esports. Yeah, I know. I can tell that. Uh, no, <clears throat> so 
What, what's your question? Yeah. Basically, <laughs> what's my hair care product? No, yeah. no, no. So you're not a proclaimed gamer, but mm-hmm. yet you're an awesome coach. So how do you convince that that teacher at a school who wants to coach but doesn't game? Yeah, I, th- I think that there's a bigger uh, yeah. So the the question is how do, how so I I my mom was a teacher. I've been a teacher for. 25 years, uh, the truth of great teachers, and y'all know the one I'm, I'm thinking of, or several of them, where you could like, I'm going to take Mrs. Give me, give me a name. Smith. Doubtfire. Miss Doubtfire. Doubtfire. All, right, all right. All right. We'll say Miss Smith, and Miss Smith's teaching French right now, um, um, Mademoiselle Smith. Uh, and <laughs> you're going to take that amazing teacher completely out of their area, and you're going to plug them in ag. Now, there would be a curve. But my money is on Smith becomes the greatest ag teacher you've ever seen, like with no experience in history, because that's not the skill set is not the subject. The skill set is learning from and getting students to engage in something. So uh, if if I if I accept any credit for being a good coach, it's because I'm a better student. So I ask the students, okay, what explain that you use that word. Um, what, t- tell me what that word meant. Um, oh, okay. So your role is a tank. So t- just break it down for me. What, what does a tank need to do? Tank needs to take space. How does a tank take space? Well, by pressing W walking forward. Well, how do you know when to press forward? Well, you got to wait till cool downs. Oh, okay. What cool downs? Well, cause this person's playing this. It's just asking these things and then become a student of those things. And then constantly double check. Okay, so we're running, we're running the, um, we're running full brawl comp here. Do we want to run this brawl comp with um, Cass, or do we want to run it with May? And they're like, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'm like, hey, they do run a lot of May. So if you want to do that May to May matchup, I think our May is better. And people are like, all right, coach, yeah, you got it. So they taught me those things and continue to teach me those things. And then when they need them, I can remind them what they know and what's important. But it begins from a position of what's important. I think of it a lot of times, uh, and this reference is getting dated, there's got to be a better NBA coach. But I think of Eric Spolstra. Eric Spolstra did not teach LeBron, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade how to play basketball, but he did teach them how to play together. Probably the best one for for our generation is uh, someone like Phil, right? Bill Jackson. Bill yep, Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who who took some of the most talented players and got them to championship level, where a lot of other coaches had similar or better talent and couldn't because he couldn't get them to play together. And uh, so much of that is just being directed at what they need in the moment. My players will tell you I'm the most successful water boy of all time <laughs> because when we're at a conference, you know, we're, you know, this weekend we're in Sacramento, we're on stage, a student starts to stand up to fill their water bottle. I'm like, nope. Give me that. That's my job when you're here because they have a very specific job. My job is not to teach them the game in the moment. It's to get them as prepared as we can. Does not standing up to get water help us win? Maybe not that one thing, but it, the collection, <laughs> the marginal gains of, right. of getting them ready to play is what solves that coin flip when we're equal to the team across from us, right? That makes complete sense. Team builders, teachers, getting people to work cohesively yeah. together. Do you find, though, I'm, I know that you know, I, I can only imagine how many coaches, esports coaches you know around the country at this point. Do you find that it is mostly, as, as we eventually will be searching for one, do you find that it's mostly from teacher backgrounds that are becoming these coaches, or are there sports coaches that are, are making the switch over? Are there sports coaches that are definitely making the switch as they're learning the games, um, whoever that person, whatever their background is, it's that core set of just being a teacher, just someone who wants to be around a group of eh, semi-obnoxious uh, people. And I'll, I'll tell you, Coach, <laughs> Coach Danielson will, would say the same thing about the players that, that he loves at Boise State. Is I mean, I've been in the presence of Coach when he's with some of his players that came to our facility, and they're just as nerdy as as my my players are, right? So it's it, part of it is just thriving in an environment where um, young people create chaos and and not being just frightened by it. Uh, that teacher mentality and wanting to help them be as successful as possible and not being afraid to ask questions and be the one in the conversation who doesn't know. Yeah, that was that was a great scene. Uh, Seeing you guys when the the team came over and uh, oh, yeah. Capel's last second that <laughs> that disappointment that was, <laughs> that was there yeah they're gamers too yeah 
For sure. I wanted to ask you, and going back to kind of what you were saying, Tyler, about how how does one start an esports program? Um, there's a lot of incentives now, things that maybe weren't as prominent eight years ago when you started, but now. Uh, even just talking to you, I, I saw you last week. You had me over at the Giving Games, which yeah. thank you for having. That was awesome. That was so cool. Oh, man. I got to pl play Mike Prater once again. And, oh, uh, he loved it. <laughs> you, just, you beat him like a drum every year. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's two years in a row. Sorry, Mike. That uh, happens. Um, <laughs> He's a regular listener, I'm told. So. Uh, yeah, oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, but the amount of scholarships in the in the esports world now has has pretty much blown my mind because we were yeah. talking about that. I didn't realize how many more there were than just just the players. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit and how these well, opportunities. It blows these. people's mind until you until you're reminded of this fact, right? That universities, um, their admission policies, their scholarships, um, are all a wager on will somebody come here? Will they study and graduate, and will they make an impact? Boards of education. Uh, grant money every year so that states can produce a certain number of, you know, we, we call these, you know, just these, uh, um, what, I, the word will come to me in a second, sure. but the, these positions like, you know, um, Boise State or Idaho State or, or um, any of these universities get money so that they'll produce 28 nurses annually, right? And, and, and six radio, you know, whatever it is, they 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 have these kind of quotas that they're trying to graduate to, uh, and and so universities are already in the business of making good bets on people, right? There are all these other degrees that we we definitely want them there, but but we're putting our resources into those things already. So whether it's rowing, which I contend is no weirder than esports, right? <laughs> um, it does not translate, cer certainly like a just, you know, crew crew rowing, like um, where you're just pulling one side. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of need for that. I've not, I've not seen that on the job boards. We need a left-handed <laughs> rower. Um, we need a look harder. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> not since the, uh, uh, maybe since the colonial wars, but, uh, but that idea... But we still recruit these incredible people to come and to do these things because they are the best at what they do, and we want to bind them to what we do at our university, give them an educational experience. People say, well, so do you have a lot of pros? Well, yeah, we, we've got a lot of gamers that are and have played at the pro level, um, but there's no amateurism restrictions. So Jonathan Foraker, clear is in Stockholm, Sweden right now for the um, Overwatch World Championships, as is Matt Mercadante. Both of them are students uh, at Boise State. They're part of our teams. But all of their competitive time is given over now to this. It will come where we have to give over the competitive time to our Olympic athletes, right? Our Olympic esports players. We don't know who they are yet. Um, I think that we've probably met them along the way because we're getting pretty close to that. But... Uh, so scholarships, right? We want to, we want to place good bets. Guess what? These are pretty smart kids, right? And they're studying engineering. They're studying, uh, we don't have pre-med, but at other universities, you see a lot of pre-med in some of the games, specifically League of Legends. Uh, uh -huh. you see, uh, I mean, we've got electrical engineering, we've got computer science, um, cybersecurity. I mean, th those you're like, oh, well, that kind of makes sense. Programming and things like that. But uh, but history, and we've had music majors come through. Uh, this is just the thing that they're really good at that we can get them to come to Boise State for. And when they, you know, they get that degree and then they go out and they impact our community and other communities, that is more of the Boise State, that blue turf thinking that just gets uh, spread all over. I mean, it. And, and something near and dear to my heart, broadcasting. Oh, yeah. As well. I mean, the whole. People don't even know. They they'll see if they tune into to you guys playing. They they know the players, and I mean that's the case in in yeah. really any sport. They know the players. Yeah. But the behind the scenes that goes on and the the scholarships that can come with yeah. that too. I mean, uh, talk about talk about your team behind the scenes a little bit. Not only the shoutcasters, but uh, I mean your guys in the production and, yeah. and the branches that they can take to <laughs> incredibly successful careers. Yeah, we've got and, and this year again we've got another um like national award nominated broadcaster um broadcast team. Uh we the joke is and if you've been to our facility you get it. We're a TV studio with a national championship esports team. We broadcast <laughs> 30 to 40 hours a week. 
And you're like, well, we're broadcasting everything you can imagine from live esports uh, commentary to studio shows to uh, uh, we produce a lot of um, content that is um, that is not live, right? And you've been voicing some of the above the line, which is a very football centric uh, kind of th- themed. Um, uh, what do we call that? Um, documentary. Type yeah, though. documentary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hard knocks. Yeah, uh, yeah. All or nothing kind of style. Following Docu- the players. Docu series. Docu series. Following um, the goods and the bads. Right. Kids getting sick and and having to do all sorts of. Yeah. It. So we do we do a ton of that. So we have twenty five uh, scholarship players. Uh, we have forty student employees. So we do scholarships um, casters from time to time, uh, but we bring those folks uh, in. We hire students uh, on campus to fill these roles in production, just like they would if they were in, uh, you know, on the basketball production squad or they're doing some of the other um, club sport or Olympic sport um, broadcasting. They're part of our team and they're part of that thirty to four. Plus, for us, we do a lot of uh, we do a lot of contract work. Uh, So we've done stuff for the NFL and the USO. Um, We just finished that up. um, The the live service members competing for um, Super Bowl tickets in Tampa and things like that with the USO. Um, I'm forgetting some of the other ones we've done. We've broadcast, I think, four national championships in collegiate esports. Yeah. So we did not know that that was going to be such an important part of, of what we did and how we made our budget annually. But... Uh, it was we knew that we'd have to tell our own story on the Boise State campus because there's that football team that's pretty good. So we, <laughs> we had to get good at the storytelling. We did not know that it was going to be such a key piece for us to attract players. And I'll tell you this one thing. Um, Gene Blaine Meyer famously made some unbelievable agreements uh, in the early 2000s uh, that put Boise State on Wednesday night football games and Thursday night football games. Some of y'all remember this. Um, it did more to raise the awareness of Boise State. And with our broadcasting, some people learn about our program, even though they're in a very rich collegiate space, they learn about our program through seeing the broadcasting. It is an unbelievable calling card that helps us to uh, recruit. And when a kid like uh, like Cannon Miller um, or Amanda um, Bailey um, from Arkansas and Pennsylvania, who are both freshmen on our Overwatch team this year, uh, when we're recruiting that process, mom and dad and Uncle Jim, they can watch every one of their matches from those, uh, you know, unique locations. And it helps us recruit because they don't lose contact with their kids. Uh-huh. I'm going to start calling Arkansas a unique location, by the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so with that, as we kind of wrap up, Cody, I was going to see if there's anything else that you wanted to kind of ask Doc or just, just throw out there, any of that stuff. Um, I've got questions for Cody. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> so um, I want to go back a little bit to yeah. that um, to that broadcasting side. So yeah, um, because I do think that's important. I, I there's kids out there that aren't very good at the games, but they are really good at content creation. Yep. Right. They love they want to be a YouTuber. Uh, yeah. So they may want to talk about who's playing or something like that. So. And we have in this area, it's not completed yet, but we do have a broadcast. It's going to be so cool. Reason. My question is, does that, is that also part of, would that also be part of the, of the esport coaches job is to direct that or at a high school level, would we look more towards a broadcast teacher or something like that to help in that area? How does that work? Mm, Good question. So what's unique about broadcast is that it continues to evolve and change, right? If you'd have told anybody 10 years ago, well, the, you know, TV news is going to, is going to take a a sharp turn, right? Right. Um, Anybody who works in television now will tell you there's always a skeleton crew in those, in those buildings, right? They're the massive buildings with all these desks and, and like nine employees. I mean, uh, they're technology has made it possible and and the way that it has distributed has made it uh, kind of necessary to have smaller and smaller crews so it is less important that somebody be trained exactly in the job that they're going to be asked to do elsewhere and more that they fall in love with the discipline gotcha. right and and falling in love with the discipline means you get to push the buttons and make the mistakes and touch the knobs and try something um 
I do coach our broadcasting. Ray Barnes is our full-time broadcast uh, director and manager and does most of the execution of those shows. Um, but I'll come in um, and tell the casters, okay, so I want you to eliminate these words and I want you to start to you know, focus on explaining things this way. And I want you to give a little bit more time here. And when you come in, I want you to have something ready and loaded. And we'll run them through drills. We'll give them examples. That's the great thing is uh, with all of this, you can show somebody something and go, what's special about that, right? Gotcha. Um, what, uh, we, we talk a lot about vocabulary. What's the voc- not, not the vocabulary that's spoken, but the visual vocabulary and the vocabulary of, of what makes a good broadcast, right? Um, you'll watch ESPN, you'll see kind of a, this constantly moving steady shot safe cam. Well, that's in the vocab now, right? right. Um, a student pointed that out. Like, I wish we could get that camera to move. And I'm like, oh, I bet you we can. $100 later off of B&H, we have a, you know, just an auto tracking, <laughs> yeah. you know, thing. And, and those kinds of things um, are just all about engaging in and falling in love with the discipline so we don't know what it will become for them. One of our most successful students um, is not yet a graduate, Peyton Wilkin, um, who lives out in this area. He is a YouTuber. He started with us as a player, started making some videos, loved the video making process, the storytelling process. And then his channel blew up, bought himself a house last year, the wow. jerk. Wow. Um, <laughs> and uh, amazing, amazing that, so that we, he, he is driven. He is unique, uh, but we got to be part of his launch pad, right? And so th- th- that's what I would say relative to all of these things, uh, analysts, um, website and stat people, um, anything that they're interested in. I mean, theater tech famously has a lineage um, and a family tree. You know, a, a theater tech person will say, oh, well, you know, my first stage manager was, you know, Emily, and she taught me how to – make a wallet out of gaff tape. And he's like, oh, okay, well, that's cool. Um, these, these small steps become loves of discipline and develop into um, careers, even though we at this table, we cannot visualize what that will become. Falling in love with and becoming just on the probably the wrong side of obsessed with something is usually what leads to success, right? Gotcha. Um, and and so we we are always looking for those people who are like, Oh, I think I could redesign that lighting scheme. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's break it. Yeah. So uh, as as we can, as start to wrap up, Cody, yeah, I, it's I, lunchtime. I heard the bell. Yeah, yeah that's that, yeah, that was the lunch bell. What? And you might not have an answer for this, but uh, and obviously the our esports spectator arena not quite done yet. Obviously, there's a lot that needs to go into the broadcast. So and, cool, people yeah. need to see it. Yeah, and and thank you. Yeah, it's it's look at this is my first time seeing it as well today, and the job you and, and your guys have done are amazing. Um, when do you have any type of estimate as to when we might be able to, as a district, get our first uh, competitions going on in here? So maybe. Um, so really what we are doing, just to give you a little bit of background too, this is at Nampa high. It is going to have Nampa high school bulldog branding in a, in a way too, but this is also an SD esports arena for all of our schools. So okay. you're not seeing all of what we've done. So through some very fantastic partners, which I'm not going to name yet, but some, some people that I, that I do work with and, and vendors that I have that, uh, um, love our kids. And, and love to see programs be successful. Uh, they have done some amazing um, things with the ability to uh, make stuff cheaper. Um, with that, <laughs> um, I was able also to deck out each of the secondary schools with um, six um, Omen, uh, HP Omen nice. uh, wow. machines. Um, and and all the everything that goes everything all the gear now the technology not necessarily the furniture but the technology um uh, will be the same at at those schools that they'll have in here so when they come because this is a place for our teams to compete our columbia's our skyviews our west middle schools oh, yeah. our, our sorry our lone stars our um you know all of them and we i did that at all levels because I want the middle schools to feed our high schools to yeah. to feed Boise State. Yes. That's my ultimate goal. Go and, Broncos! Right, go Broncos! <laughs> I I went to school at Boise State, so I, I'm I'm a little uh, I'm a fan. But anyway, 
Um, so that's the side that you don't see here. And we're slowly building that out. They're finding folks. And um, this side, because it should be completed, I'm hoping, by the middle of December. Um, and then we can start, we'll get training uh, that we, so we can train the trainer and then um, start looking at how our next steps. Um, that's kind of my hope and my goal. Um, we still got all the AV to put in. Uh, none of the screens are up. Um, I'm doing a lot of digital stuff just because I want to be able to, to brand it to the school that's competing when they come in. Yeah. Um, and it, it can be Napa high all the way, but when, when Columbia is competing with, uh, with somebody else from a different district, it can be Columbia all the way. Um, and, or it could be Napa high versus Skyview all the way or West. You've got some basketball yeah. matchups so. that are coming up in the spring. Oh, that, yeah. I, I think tying those <laughs> yeah. together and getting oh, both yeah, those yeah. groups in here. Yes. Was amazing. That was a, that, that, that was a fantastic idea about trying to tie it to something that matches that same season, because then, you know, the kids can travel with another team if they can't get here. And so great idea. Uh, that's what we're looking for is ideas. I'll right? be here for that. And, and you're invited to every one of them. Uh, please, yes. <laughs> Any, if for so anything cool. you want to do, you so come. So cool. And for, for any kids who maybe are here in this episode or maybe just hear, or heard about our impending esports program in general, is now the time they start reaching out to somebody to say, hey, I'm interested, I want to get in on this? Any time's they, the time. And how do they do that? Who do they So they, they can always reach out to your principal. Um, it, I would say you may or may not have an, an esports club yet, um, but reach, show your interest. Uh, the, the kids showing their interest is what's going to drive this uh, even further, or it's going to help build it. Um, it's going to take the kids. This was built for the kids, a hundred percent built for the kids. And this room was built to show the, so the parents can come down and watch their kids and be proud of what they're yeah. doing. And not just, and not just on the stage. That's why we, we, we mocked up the, the Boise state broadcast area. Yes. There's windows. You can see through there to see what those kids are doing. To yeah. see the action, watch, watch them make the donuts in there. I right. mean, it, it, we lucked out that 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 wall existed, but it has proven to be maybe one of the greatest things because people can actively watch what's happening, uh, and then they understand the the skill behind it. Uh, for the for the any family members who are who are listening, ask ask your you know your friends your you know friends children whatever. Hey, aren't you playing that fork knife? Are you gonna play? That, oh, yeah, are you gonna play knife. that for your school? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you should play fork knife with your school, right? I mean, truly, um, whatever the game is, uh, yeah, those those kids just need to come forward and find an opportunity to compete or just participate. Some people don't like to compete, correct? And yep, they just want to be around it. They just want to participate. And gosh, there's so many roles to do. And there's so there exactly. There's a ton that goes into this, and it doesn't. It has more than. More than yeah. just being good with a keyboard and a mouse or a joystick, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to ask one one more question of you before I get to my random question, uh, yes, which I've good. been thinking of still. It's, it's almost there. It's, so, it's truly random. No, <laughs> it really is. Yeah. So it's more of a personal question, but it applies to anybody. Yeah. So my son is 11. He, yeah. he loves playing video games. I'll play not Fork Knife, but a <laughs> Fortnite with him. And is that he, a new one? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he is. He's, to go back to what I was saying, he's stupid good at it. Stupid good. So at a, the age of 11, what advice would you give him or any other kids that young that want to eventually get up to BSU for the esports and then beyond? Uh, I want your answer first. What advice would I have for him? Yes. Yeah, 11-year-old. For an 11-year-old. Um, well, if I go off of what my son said to me, who didn't want to play Overwatch until he found out that we were building an esports program here, and now he practices Overwatch all the time, is I think you just need to, what do you do is, is you need to ask the questions. You need to, you need to seek the resources, right? It, it, I don't know if that's the correct answer or not. Oh, but, I, I don't know that there is a correct answer. Right. right? I mean, I, 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 I don't know. So I, I know what I go to, but I was I'm interested in here. Yeah, I mean, truly ask the question. It's like, okay, well, what is competitive, right? right. Uh, so, so for the 11 year old, um, part of it is if you think this is, it's less important to know what game at 11 and more better understand what it what it means to evaluate being good at something. I think we all like 
We'll pick up a bowling ball and we'll go, oh, maybe I'm the best bowler. Maybe this is my thing, right? Y- your thing usually doesn't hit you like a bolt of lightning. It, it comes from struggling through something and then finding out that, well, okay, I, got, I figured out how to get better at it. So, so m- maybe it's Fortnite. Maybe w- it's whatever follows Fortnite or something completely different. Uh, maybe it's the cello. But it's the process of trying to figure out who's good, what does it take to be good, and asking the questions, how do you know if you're good, right? Uh, an old band director of mine used to say, you never realize how good you can become until you realize how much you suck. So it is it, that process of evaluation. Like, I enjoy this world a lot. Uh, who's good? How do I tell if I'm good? Um, and then how how can I try what I do against the, the better and better and better opponents? And you know that I mean that's that's where Tony Hawk came from, right? Famously, just people. I mean, at what twelve, he had a, a local skate shop um, thing. But it was he was really interested in figuring out what it took to be good at something. And it doesn't surprise you these you know multi million you know, multimillionaire, um, you know, I forget what the name of the, the tour the, uh, that he organized and, um, and, and ran for years. That wasn't related to his skateboard. That was related to the other thing, which is what does it take to make something cool? What does it take to be good at something? It's, it's that constantly asking that question. And th- that's where it begins. It's like, you, you love doing this. Um, how do you know? How do you know if you're good? Right. And what it, whatever it evolves into is what it evolves into. But that's the that's the process for everybody. Yeah. I would also say, too, that a lot of a lot of really good gamers that are out there that are that are, you know, kids or still in, in middle school or high school. They're big into, you know, the Black Ops and the Call of Duties. Mm-hmm. And uh, those are not games that are going to be played. Nope. At, at, at we don't recruit them or scholarship. Or, them. Yep. Yeah. So um, but. They're very good at that. So transfer mm-hmm. those skills to a game that will be played. And I was gonna, uh, I was gonna, can. I was gonna just uh, ask, actually, right off of that, good, uh, good little segue there. The games that are actually played, by the way, uh, I think I can name them: League of Legends, which I've never played; mm-hmm. uh, Overwatch, haven't played that one; um, not Fork Knife, Fork. <laughs> <laughs> I broke him. <laughs> Fork Knight, <laughs> which I've never played. However, the ones I have played, uh, Rocket League, which yep. I'm not great at, uh, as you saw. And, and we'll use played liberally in this case, but continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I held a controller for. And uh, one I do know more than anything, um, Madden yes. has traditionally NCFB been. NCFB 25. Ex- yes. Computer-based sports games, essentially. And it, it has been Madden up until this year and is now NCAA football. So yep. my question is, with that, obviously, when when you had uh, and you you've had a national championship or champion for Madden mm-hmm. or championship in Madden before, those are all NFL teams. All the team, you know, you'll have some teams that are obviously better than than others. But with NCAA, obviously, you can have terrible teams, yeah, playing against good teams. You match up against whoever you're playing uh, each each week this year. It's. I mean, what a great year it is to be a Bronco yeah. this year. Not only football Got Ashton field, but Genty on the roster. Yeah. My gosh, up to a ninety-seven overall, I think right now. Right. Um. What <laughs> if you're playing a team like Wyoming? Are they like eh, we're going to be Alabama? <laughs> uh, well, the the games do allow you to essentially um, make the rosters pretty consistent. You still okay. you still have your uh, your your strong player abilities, which happen in those games, but but it's a little bit more normed. So we will play uh, Wyoming this week in CFB 25. Okay, great. Um, Matthew uh, Wilson will play um, th- their player. And uh, actually, if we, uh, knock on wood, host the Mountain West Championships, we'll, we will also host the Mountain West CFB uh, 25 Championships, nice. um, which looks to be be our player versus the SJSU player right now. Oh. Uh, and they'll fly here to play that. Um, maybe even on the Jumbotron. We'll see how it goes. Ooh. Might be kind of cold for the Jumbotron, but we'll find out. I wonder if there's any analytics to ever look and see how many of the same plays were played with the live game versus the... Um, mm. so, and a follow-up question. Where are you in your um, graduate studies? <laughs> <laughs> 
to to your to your question just about about the games in general the games continue to change uh every year oh. um a little bit now there's some that we've had for seven and eight years but there'll probably be a time where overwatch is not on our roster mm. um because there'll be another game that we like we we love overwatch because it is the broadest uh and most diverse uh male female player culture um, oh, awesome uh That's all all of them have young men and young women that play it but um competitively um with two support roles which tend to be just gravitational to some players um female players specifically um that one remains a, a really diverse group we played with uh two female players on stage this week uh out of five at uh, in Sacramento, which is something you see more more common in that game than others. But um, that said, um, the games that um, you, I mean, you mentioned Call of Duty and some of those, um, they almost all have uh, correlated uh, or relative games that are T-rated, which is the, what we support. That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. T-rated games, uh, even so, if if they're really good at uh, CS:GO or CS2. Um, uh, that is an M-rated game with some blood splatter. There's another game, which is called Valorant, which is the same Valorant, tactic, yeah. same economic structure, and and but it's all techno magic, right? Uh, people get beamed out, just like they do in Fortnite, right? You know, you you knock somebody down in Fortnite, and that little bot comes in, beams them out, right? Um, they're not dead. They just got teleported, right? Right. So little things like that make a difference in, in how a game is rated, um, and and we we have those those alts for for most of those games that people come in and play. So are there any games right now on the horizon that either we maybe we haven't have heard of or maybe don't even know about yet that yeah. are on your radar or the the esports radar in general that could be coming up? Uh, CFB, um, college football twenty five. Um, I think we're still two years away from the college basketball version of it, but that one's coming as well. Um, any of those like EA style sports games are on the rise again, and we're uh, we're looking for folks. The difference is those aren't really team games as much as they are. So we're looking for a player in that game. Street Fighter Six, uh, oh, which yeah. is a, a really splashy. I mean, you're all like Street Fighter. I remember that at the arcade. Yep, same franchise. Um, it's it looks pretty cool now as well. But um, that's a that's a game we're playing a lot of, and. Uh, there's a game on the horizon called Deadlock, which is kind of a blend between League of Legends, so it's wave management, uh, towers, and uh, things like that, trying to get to a core uh, that you take down, 5v5, uh, but in a first-person, uh, more Overwatch style of view. That's really popular right now. We'll see if it translates, because at the end of the day, just like Nampa High, um, can play any game reasonably what matters is who you play against so um those in those in the nsd that play rocket league hey that's that's a competitive title because you you are not going to lose you know or or no let's actually let's ramp up all all the local schools against those from the evil i'm sorry the east side of the state <laughs> almost the same letters right you know from shelly and you know highland and oh, we play them you know every year in in the in the high school events right, right. so it, it really is what are they playing can we what can we play together what can we play online together so that we don't have to travel kids all the time except a couple times a year um that, that I think that's how you find a game. And anybody listening to this is not going to know, like, hey, he didn't mention, you know, this game. No, we're good. Um, but uh, the kids, kids know what they are. It's just finding what they're interested in. And it happens every year. Someone will come and say, hey, do you have Guilty Gear, which is another fighting game? Like, no, but tell me more about it. Mm. And then we find out that there's a circuit and there are other schools playing it. Like, well, We'll support you in that. We can't scholarship you for that necessarily, but we'll support you. We'll get you jerseys. We'll broadcast some of your matches. We'll, you know, you know, you can play as Boise State. They're like, yeah, that's awesome. So there are games that pop up all the time that um, that we can support kids in, um, and high schools can too, uh, middle schools can too, um, that don't necessarily have a specific opponent that you have to play against. Everything can be online, and that is what makes esports so powerful. So awesome. speaking of opponents, <clears throat> during the giving games, I watched Matt play Praetor mm -hmm. in CFP 25. Matt and I have a, our own online dynasty that we're playing, and we play each other next. Nice. 
he has not seen me play, but I've seen him play. So I can kind of see his tendencies. But what is your assessment on how I can beat Matt? Okay. <laughs> so Doc's keys to the game. Uh, Doc's keys to Doc's the game. Doc's keys to the game yeah. Against, yeah. against Matt is, first of all, engage him in conversations that will will have him teach you about the game unnecessarily, right? He is yeah. such a kind heart that if you say, hold on, how do I call a timeout again? He will forget his strategy, he will stop looking at his plays, and he'll show you the the button combination. And he'll decline the penalties. And he will decline the penalties. That's all of them, yeah. Yeah, um, he is the nicest. Now that he's hearing this, he might... Change his strategy. Yeah. I don't think he'll change the strategy, do you? No. No. So so yeah, part of it part of it is is the is the mental play of just distraction. Um we, uh, truly, we were on stage uh at uh in Sacramento and we realized and I'm stomping on the floor here that the s- stage really reverberated and I I told our player just don't be startled, but when we applaud, we're also going to stomp our feet for you as well because it just creates this thunderousness. And that is that makes the opponent uncomfortable, right? So I mean, it could make both of them equally uncomfortable. But it, you know, it's it's a very foreign situation. Just like cheering, right? Um, we had our crowd cheer louder when our player did great stuff. That's when you find out, these are mental games, right? So when you find out um, wh- how much your your opponent can tolerate, and if they're really good at it, and they just continue to um, kick your butt, then they were stronger than you are, right? Um, but yeah, um, also, um, just look at the user that he's selecting that player's coming in, that player's chasing your quarterback. <laughs> I, I, I did pick up on that end. and he always plays to the left. Uh, I he will play. not throw to the right. I kept saying in the chat, oh, go yeah. right, go right, go right. Like, like Listen. Zoolander, he's an ambi-turner. <laughs> not an ambi-turner. <laughs> um, I should have mentioned before you started giving him tips that he's his, in the dynasty. He's playing as Washington. I'm playing as BSU. By okay. the way, so just throwing that out there. So, well, okay. So it sounds like he already has a handicap that he can't. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> well, that said, any final thoughts from you, Cody? No, I'm just happy that we're on this uh, on this road and and stuff's happening, and I'm looking forward to this for our schools and our kids. And I really appreciate Doc and and the stuff that he's you are willing to absolutely help and... crushing it. So I, w- one small thought. Apologize yeah, for no, the length go. of this, please. Uh, but um, I, <laughs> I get a I get a lot of uh, misplaced credit um, that you know compliments from from people. Um, but I am constantly surprised and amazed at the creativity you specifically, but also our colleagues around the state. Yeah. You know, Thank folks you. like Dalton up at Sam mm-hmm. Point yeah. and. Yeah. Uh, Nate, who who was part of the district, now he's at mm-hmm. he's at the what are we the Death Star? No, I'm sorry, Bishop Kelly. Bishop Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> but uh, just at the amount of creativity that you are putting into this, that actually inspire and push us, it truly is the case. It, uh, you know, I, I'll turn around and and this is not normal on a on a college campus. I'll see something that's happening in the state, and I had no part in that, and I just get to come in and enjoy it. Yeah. Right. Um, or I get to come in and like borrow from it. They came up with a, a tournament structure um, that allows eight teams to continue playing for three straight rounds. And the kids get what I always think is the win condition, which is games played. The more games you play, the better you feel about how you did um, getting eliminated in the first game. That just stinks. Yeah. Right. Um, they came up with this great structure where everybody gets to keep playing. But you still have that one through eight placement at the end. It's so cool. We didn't come up with that. Yeah, and this this is cool. This is inspiring. This is a reminder that we can do uh, cool things. And so, thanks for the inspiration. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, and I mean, Doc, I was going to say, any any last words or thoughts for our program? But you just, uh, I think, got it all out there, and we're just so excited. Uh, as you know, a lot of this was modeled after everything you guys have done, and. I mean, your your program is so incredible, and having you here today has just been uh, really something special for us. And I'm oh sure. Oh my gosh, listeners. I just so. love talking about these kids and the cool stuff they're doing. Yeah, we're really excited to to be able to bring this to the kids here at NSD, and and just know the opportunities yeah. they can have. And it's not, you know, to the parents, it's not just video games anymore. No. It's not. It's it's a potential and, career future. And one thought on that. I mean, we're 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 thinking about the, you know the. The December opening and the you know and the and the spring matches and some of these moments. What is hard for us to fathom as we stand on the deck of the ship, the curvature, what what lies ahead for these kids? There's going to be a moment 25 years from now 
or one of these kids is going to be standing with a group, and it could be these games, it could be other games, it could be other things where they're going to be leading them, and they're going to be calling back to this experience that they had that you all created, and the people listening uh, empowered and enabled, um, that is going to make a huge difference on people you've never met, probably aren't even born yet. Um, we don't see the impacts of those things, uh, but they are there, and they drive what make this important to us without us even knowing what they are. That's the gift, right, is that, is that hard work and loving people and enabling them to do what they do well uh, creates opportunities for them to do the same in ways we can't even imagine. There's an Olympian, there's an eSports Olympian uh, or an Olympic coach that's going to come through the NSD uh, process because this exists, right? In the same way that a you know, the, an NFL coach came from, you know, a, a high school in Texas that no one would even thought would, you know, you see, you see these famous people at all these schools that came through this environment because you gave them opportunities to do cool things without even knowing what it would be. Whew. There you go. Talk about inspiration. I think that's no, the words right there. Jeez. Well, Matt, since you are the voice yeah. of <laughs> Boise State Esports, I'm going to let you take it home. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, this has been episode number 15 of the Nevis School District podcast. We want to thank Doc Haskell for being here today, Boise State Esports head coach, as well as Cody Kreps. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Doc. We'll talk to you next week.